Welcome to A Moment of Zen. Time to sit back and relax as model, actress, mentor, and supermom Zen Sams takes you on a sexy and wild ride covering the latest in film, fashion, pop culture, cryptocurrency, fintech, cannabis, and entertainment from the millennial mom's perspective. Here's your host, Zen Sams. Hello, my beautiful tri-state area. Welcome to our 168th episode. That's right, 168 episodes. It's always such a pleasure to spend my time with you on the airwaves. Thank you for listening and interacting with me on social media. It truly does make it all worthwhile. I read all of those comments and reply to each and every one of you. Please make sure to continue to follow me at Zen Sams. That's Zen with an X, not a Z. And also remember that our episodes stream 24-7 on Your Home TV and Kathy Ireland Worldwide. And of course, you can always find us on our YouTube channel at Zen Sams. Up next in the Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift in our Expert on the Microphone series. Today, we're featuring Dr. Daisy Aim, a highly accomplished triple board certified cosmetic surgeon and obstetrician gynecologist. She has over 15 years of experience. She's going to join me today to chat all about carboxytherapy for skin rejuvenation, and she's going to help me demystify sexual stigmas. That's right, sexual stigmas surrounding women's health. In the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Smart Pet Talk, today we're joined by our regular contributor and co-host, Dan Gilman. He's joined by Jordan Harvey, CEO and founder of Remote Control Technology, which is a design tech company powered by pioneers in engineering. They're going to join me to chat all about his impacts on the tech industry, the motivation behind remote control, and the future of the digital world. Next, in the Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, in honor of LGBTQ and Pride Month, we're going to be chatting with director, storyteller, and producer Ryan Sarno, joined by actor and producer Sergio Acevedo, currently starring in the film The Greatest, which is a 1960s LGBTQ feature. We're going to dive into their experiences, collaboration, and insights into the film industry in making The Greatest. In the Scandal segment brought to you by Your Home TV channel partners and Kathy Ireland Worldwide, today we're featuring Imran Ansari of Idala Bertuna Kamens, otherwise known as ABK Law, right here in New York City. He's also a regular contributor and legal analyst on law and crime. Imran is going to review the Trump conviction and what that means for the 2024 elections. Will Trump be able to vote and maintain a passport? Stay tuned for the Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, featuring Dr. Daisy Aim, triple board certified cosmetic surgeon and obstetrician gynecologist, helping me demystify stigmas surrounding female sexual health. You don't want to miss it. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxytherapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2 Lift lift.com. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in the Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift in our Expert on the Microphone series, we're featuring Dr. Daisy Aim, a highly accomplished triple board certified cosmetic surgeon and obstetrician gynecologist. With over 15 years of experience, Dr. Daisy is a leader in combining cosmetic surgery and OBGYN, enhancing women's health, wellness, and beauty. She operates a private practice in Houston, Texas. She is a respected faculty member, mentor, and media expert. She specializes in facial, breast, body, and female sexual wellness procedures. Today, she joins me to chat all about carboxytherapy, for skin rejuvenation, including your skin down there. And she's also going to help me demystify sexual stigmas surrounding women's health. Welcoming now to the show is Dr. Daisy Aim. Welcome, superstar. Hi. Hi, Zen. How are you? 
So excited to have you on. Now let's dive right into this new trend of Google search of carboxy therapy that everybody is trying to educate themselves on. Can you explain the benefits of, of carbon dioxide therapy for skin rejuvenation and how it fits into regenerative medicine, particularly biostimulators like CO2 Lift Pro? Oh, wow. So I'm excited to be here. Carboxy therapy is not a new phenomenon. It's been around for a while. But currently in the skin space, we're using it in the form of CO2 lift. And what that is, is it's in a gel form that when it applied to the face, it causes this acute increase of CO2 in that area. So your body naturally responds to it by increasing blood flow to the face or wherever the carboxy therapy is applied. And that increased blood flow, increased um, collagen production, growth factors. So it just helps the tissue heal. So if you've had a procedure like, say, microneuling or chemical pill or any injury, applying a carboxy therapy to that area just helps with the healing and just improves the results. So the, the science is the science, right? When you yes. increase the presence of wound repair factors and growth factors, to your point, that helps turn the cells over faster. And that reduces the appearance of, of course, aging and scars and stretch marks and so much more. I've been using this product personally, and I absolutely love the results. Now, how does CO2 lift treatment differ from other skin rejuvenation procedures and what makes it effective specifically for enhancing skin texture and appearance? Yes, so the first reason why it's different from other skincare treatment is it's non-invasive. So there's no injury to your skin, say like with a chemical peel or microneedling or any other procedure. And it works with your natural skin to produce increased oxygenation. So that's what I like about it. There's no injury to your skin. There's no downtime. And it's very simple. And the CO2 Lift Pro, to my understanding, is the strongest <laughs> version of carboxy gel, and it's only available to aesthetic and medical providers. But I know it's an in-office or an at-home yeah. treatment um, that does deliver the CO2 cutaneously over about 45 minutes to an hour. Yes. And when, when watching the patient testimonials, you really see the reaction. It's authentic. It's a transdermal, non-invasive facial mask. And really, your peers, yourself, are now recommending this for post-procedure care after these invasive procedures, like you said. Um, now I'm going to shift a little bit. We often hear the use of toxins and fillers for facial enhancements, which we go to and as yeah. we beautify ourselves. But how does how does incorporating CO2 lift complement or enhance these treatments in your practice, whether it's Botox or injectables? Well, it's a great complement because it's not taken away from the procedure at all. It enhances it by increasing blood flow to that area. So therefore you have this increased flow which causes your body to produce a collagen through fibroblast production. So it's a great way to just enhance the procedure without taking an extra step. And I love recommending it to my patients because I tell them, you know, once you go home, you have to do something at bedtime, right? Before going to sleep. So why not do the CO2 mask and beautify your, yourself? I love it. Now we're going to shift a little. Let's chat sexual wellness. So yeah. in a 2022 study, by the gynecologist at the University of Manchester, England, less than 10% of women could accurately label female genitalia. Mm -hmm. The clitoris the clitoris is even more taboo than the vagina and arguably the most neglected human organ by medicine. Um, it's still inadequately depicted in most medical textbooks and barely touched upon in medical training. This is a serious problem. I mean, women have been injured by this lack of knowledge through botched reconstruction surgeries, anti-incontinence procedures, obstetric tears and repairs and vulvectomies. But we're at the beginning of redressing the wrongs and misinformation around this neglected organ. Pioneers like yourself are mm -hmm. helping pave the way. Dr. Daisy, why do you think there is shame and embarrassment in the word sex and vagina? <laughs> well, I hope to think that there's not as embarrassment with it anymore, but there's a little bit. Going back to the point that you touched on, which I want to just uh, go further in, you are correct. In our medical school or training, the, the involvement in the anatomy and the discussion in the vulva vaginal area is limited or lacking, even as an OBGYN. You know, we could do a better job to really in diving in further to bring that into our everyday conversation, because as women, when we age, that area changes as well. And there are conversations that needs to be had about that area and how to manage women with it. 
So going back to your question about why is there a shame with vagina and culturally, I think it's just because in general, some cultures, you know, girls are trained or raised to not be talkative about that era. It's supposed to be sacred. It's supposed to be valuable. But in some ways, it's a disservice because not talking, not discussing it, you therefore don't have information. And when you do have questions, you don't know who to go to to talk to about those questions. One thing about social media, which I actually love right now, is that there's so much freedom in that space. So women are just being very vocal. And sometimes it comes with misinformation. But I applaud the fact that people are just talking about it. So now you have industries and companies looking into it. And that's why you see all those devices that are coming out to help in that space. But it still missed, in my opinion, the basics of it, which is the anatomy and the physiology and the hormones that impact that area. Yes. So now let's talk about how we can beautify the skin down there. So I actually use CO2 lift vaginal treatment. For me, it helped lift, hydrate, rejuvenate it in just three applications. It was amazing. It helped tighten and lift it all for me down there, basically, <laughs> basically using carbon dioxide therapy. So it was yeah. really, really simple, right? Yes. The same concept of the face enhances circulation by, rush by rushing oxygen-rich blood to tissue and regenerates these cells to improve sensitivity and lubrication. It's quite phenomenal. Now, yeah. some might find it surprising, but you also offer treatments related to sexual health because that's what you do. Can you share your perspective on CO2 lift vaginal rejuvenation treatments mm -hmm. and why addressing sexual health aligns with your overall approach to patient care and wellness? Yeah. So CO2 vaginally is the same concept as the face. We have the same skin texture in our vulva area as we do as the face. So I really encourage all my women that come in here to see me to take time and look at your anatomy in your vulva vaginal area. Because the more familiar you, you are with it, the easier it is to understand why a product like CO2 Lift is beneficial. As we age, collagen decreases, and that goes everywhere. So down in the vulva area, the skin becomes saggy, become loose. So something like a CO2 lift a B is helpful to restore blood flow to that area and improve their appearance. Now, if you have underlying medical conditions like say lintra sclerosis or painful intercourse, or you've had chemotherapy and you know, you've given birth or you're in a menopause year, that area changes as well. Your vulva vagina area changes. So a CO2 lift is really helpful to restore flow to the area, restore the tissue how it was. So in my practice, I recommend it to women. You know, you can do it immediately after I've done a procedure, like say a labioplasty the same day, several treatments. You can use it just as a regular uh, service after having a children and your you know, sex is painful, you're feeling dry, that's very helpful. You can use it in conjunct with being on hormonal replacement therapy. So you can use it combined. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can do both. So I really diversify how I use it in my practice and my patients are all really happy. What a fantastic product. Now, how have you witnessed the CO2 lift vaginal rejuvenation actually affect the health of, of your patients, including their skin down there? What are the actual results that you can report? Oh boy. Well, that's a great question. I don't even have to look far. Let me answer it personally. I have used CO2. Yes. <laughs> I have used a CO2, uh, CO2 V lift, and let me just tell you, it was amazing. I am a perimenopausal patient of mine, I guess you could say that. And what I loved about it is that it's the ease of application. So ladies, it doesn't take much to apply this in the outer third of your vagina and outside of the vagina, the vulva skin area, the glottoris, the labia minora, and let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour. You can even sleep overnight with it if you want to. And then in the morning, you just rinse it off. The effect of it, what I felt was the immediate effect was a cooling sensation that you get with it. And then over multiple treatment, you notice that the skin looks better and the performance in that area is also improved. Okay. So I have used it and I loved it. So whenever I'm recommending to my patient, I always reference myself, the ease of application, the results of it. And if you have underlining more medical condition it's also beneficial. So yes, I've used it and I love it ladies. So how many treatments do you recommend for somebody to see results? Well, everyone is different as different depending what I am treating. So I usually give a ballpark anywhere from three to 15 treatment, depending what we're targeting. So let's say a woman that has lintron sclerosis or post chemotherapy, she may need more treatment. 
if a woman is having painful intercourse or vaginal dryness, then she may need fewer treatments. So it varies depending why we need to get you on it. And then do you maintain after you finish the initial treatment? Yeah, so maintenance is variable. I tell patients, take a look and see how you feel after six months to a year. You may feel like, okay, in a year of time, I may need maintenance, or you may not. I have some patients that just use it routinely as their everyday protocol, and that's fine too. There's no harm to it. I love it. Thank you so much. We are officially out of time, my dear, and I really appreciate you being so transparent about your own experience <laughs> with the CO2 Lift V. That was one of the top testimonials I've heard, if I've ever heard one. That's right. Straight from the doctor's mouth. <laughs> there, there you go. All right. Stick around as we head over to Aim Surgical Arts to visit Epifania Morales, one of Dr. Daisy's patients. She's going to share her thoughts on her revitalizing CO2 lift treatment after her chemical peel and Botox treatment. Let's dive right in. What's the main reason for your visit to Dr. Daisy today? The main reason for my visit was skin concerns. I had dog, dark pigmentation, I had dry skin. Um, also, I wanted something that was tightening and also to give me like that natural glow. What is your most important consideration when evaluating skincare treatments? Uh, my most important thing to evaluate for skincare would be I would say dryness, um, dark spots, it's, it's quite a few. Um, also wrinkles, I wanted something. You know, I'm looking for like tight skin, glowing skin. How old are you and what do you do for work? Okay, so I am 33 years old and for a living, I am a stay at home mom. Have you heard of carboxytherapy for skin rejuvenation? Um, I have heard of carboxy therapy for skin rejuvenation. I heard that it gives you more, it, it helps with anti-aging. Um, it also is basically like magic for your skin. It gives you like this nice cooling sensation. It, it's a really good product, so it is something that I did try. What are you expecting from this CO2 lift treatment for pre and post care? Um, so I was expecting from the treatment was, um, more young look, more fresh, more glowing, um, just basically everything that is, it, it did for me. How did the mask feel on your face? So using the CO2 mask, I did feel, it's a 45 minute process. Um, I did feel it was cold. Um, when you put it on your skin, it feels like it was magic was happening. So it did feel very refreshing on the skin. What are the most apparent results? I would say the most apparent results from using the mask would be the natural glow that I have after my face washes, um, especially immediately after I used the product, I did notice my skin was tightened and glowing and shining and it was good. Would you use the CO2 lift mask again for pre or post care? The mask is something I would use again, as well as I would recommend it to everybody. That was our going deep segment brought to you by CO2 lift in our expert on the microphone series. That was the incredible Dr. Daisy Aim, And you can head directly to her website at drdaisyaim.com or check her out on the gram at Dr. Daisy Aim, D-R-D-A-I-S-Y-A-Y-I-M. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improved pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2Lift. 
A Moment of Zen is sponsored by Fintech TV. Fintech TV, the newest streaming channel focused exclusively on the business of blockchain, digital assets, and sustainability. Broadcasting from our studio on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with daily reports from NASDAQ, global expansion, and 24-7 coverage. Become part of the launch. Head to fintech.tv slash invest. Fintech.tv slash invest. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sands. Up next in the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Smart Pet Talk. Today, we're joined by contributor, podcaster, and host Dan Gilman. And today, he is joined by Jordan Harvey, CEO and founder of Remote Control Technology, a design technology company powered by pioneers, engineering products, and experiences of the future. As a leading futurist in the tech industry with over 20 years of experience, Jordan has a proven track record of developing innovative solutions, shaping the future of technology. He's worked with some of the biggest names in the field. His unique combination of strategic thinking and design expertise has helped his clients become leaders in the development of innovative software and hardware solutions and products. He's also the founder of Novo Reality, a revolutionizing virtual reality robotics platform for virtual experiences. Beyond his entrepreneurial achievements, Jordan is dedicated to education. At the School of Visual Arts in New York, he mentors students in interactive applications, animated films, and visual effects. They join me today to chat all about his impact on the tech industry, the motivation behind remote control, and the future of the digital world. Welcoming now to the show are Dan Gilman and Jordan Harvey. Welcome, superstars. Hi, Zen. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jordan, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Let's dive right in. So to my understanding, you've had quite the career already, and I know you've been recognized for your numerous contributions to the tech industry, garnering many awards and honors, and being invited to speak at conferences such as NYC, X Design Week, Sotheby's, the Art of VR Conference, and the Future of Storytelling. But taking a step back, can you share a little bit about your background and what led you to pursue a career in technology and digital innovation? Yeah, I, that's a that's a deep question, but I'll try to be as brief as I can. Um, you know, I'm just very fascinated by creative ingenuity in general, and I think it comes from you know an upbringing with my father who raised us, kind of building houses, very hands on. And you know, I studied at School of Visual Arts in New York City as well, my alma mater where I teach now, and. Uh, you know, that uh, naturally lent itself towards kind of a hands-on creative approach. And uh, I studied visual effects animation. And, um, you know, there's a lot of practicality to that type of creative design. And it lends itself towards uh, practical applications and technology as well. And, you know, in, in the, the emergence of the um, kind of games and applications era in the late 2000s, I got very interested in ways to apply create a vision and quality towards interactive experiences via mobile or web. So um, that was really the catalyst that kind of launched me into this world of technology and understanding how to develop high quality content on, uh, you know, usually technology platforms that require a lot of uh, constraint. Well, you've certainly found yourself in a great industry that is set for substantial growth. And according to market growth reports, the global technology market size was valued at $803 million this year alone, and it's expected to reach $3.2 billion by the year 2031. And this certainly doesn't come as a surprise with the exponential growth of technological innovations such as artificial intelligence. I mean, VR and the rise of Web 3.0, especially in recent years, most people are shying away from it because they just quite frankly don't understand it. So while we've come so far, it really is just the beginning in many respects, but it seems like you've positioned yourself well for the future. Now, I know Dan has a few questions, so I'll hand it off to him. Yeah, Jordan, good to good to have you here. What was the initial vision behind founding Remote Control, and how has that vision evolved over the years? Uh, it's a great question. I love talking about this because it really shines the light on the true value of the company. And, uh, you know, if we really want to dig into what Remote Control offers the world, it's not necessarily technology innovation. It's access to people 
you know, and the, the vision of remote control wasn't to create a groundbreaking technology innovation company or help all these great companies that we've worked with make these innovations happen. It was to offer an opportunity for people like me who are creative technologists and innovators uh, do that with, uh, you know, the constraints of life, you know, children and family and, and uh, the timelines that usually are dictated a technology company or a studio or agency are really not conducive for having your own personal life. So the vision of remote control really came out of that. It was this idea that we might be able to create an environment that we can be high performance innovators and do really amazing innovative work, but still have a great work life balance. You know, so our our equity is really in the people. You know, and that's that was the idea that remote control kind of uh, birthed out of. Fascinating, and it's clear that where some fall short of the necessary technical skills uh, and others fall short of the artistry, you really mastered fusing both creativity and cutting edge tech. So it should come as no surprise that you've partnered with companies like Meta and Peloton and even the US Air Force. Now, can you describe the core mission of remote of remote control and how it influences your company's strategies and projects? Yeah, our core mission is really to illustrate the future of uh, creative applications in technology. That's why we want to work with Air Force. That's why we want to work Pelotons. That's why we want to work with Meta, because those are um, organizations that represent the forefront of technology and innovation. They really put, you know, massive global efforts into making uh, transformational technology, and we want to be there with them. You know, and I think that. If you can live and breathe on that cutting edge of technology, you learn so much, not just about who you are as a person or who you are as an organization. You also learn a lot about the world and the people within it, you know, and I think that's very fascinating. And you, you mentioned Meta. So you've collaborated with Meta, which was formerly Facebook, on several projects. And can you elaborate on your partnership with Meta and the impact it has on remote control? Oh, they are, um, you know, a lot of agencies or studios have um, a large list of clients and typically they have some that like, you know, they're the breadwinners or they're the, you know, the, the showcase client. Meta is quite simply my favorite client that I've worked with, not just because they're Meta and they have this grand um, brand that really um, represents like innovation, but because like Working with them on a day-to-day -day basis is so inspiring because there's so many amazing people that they're able to bring together for these projects. And um, thankfully, they've you know entrusted remote control to help them bring uh, visual and quality innovations to their pipeline. And I really enjoy working with them a lot because of the opportunity to be on the forefront of technology. You know, we've been working with Meta before they rebranded as Meta. We went through that transition with them. And, you know, the vision that they have is quite frankly, working with a lot of technology companies, one of the most altruistic visions of technology. And I appreciate that as an optimist with technology. And uh, they really are um, not just a, a lifeblood as a client for us, but they offer, offer you know our our team so much inspiration to working with them on that type of innovation incredible tell me you love your clients without telling me you love your clients it's yeah and, it's a dream <laughs> yeah and and these vr technologies are only going to keep growing and expanding since they really could be applied in so many different areas, right? Education, entertainment, healthcare, tourism, architecture. I mean, the list goes on and on. In fact, in 2023, there were just under 66 million people using VR in the U.S., which was a 15% increase um, since 2022. And looking specifically at VR headsets, according to IDC analysts, virtual reality headsets are on the rise with steadily growing sales by over 32% a year. So it's clear that there has been a shift in interest for this technology. And while the terms are not synonymous, it's hard to talk about VR without also talking about the metaverse, right? And VR and VR headsets play a central role in transporting users into the metaverse to engage more effectively with their virtual environment and other users in the space. Now, Jordan, I'd love to get your take on this since according to a study by Tidio, over 77% of people are concerned about the metaverse's harmful impact on society. But 
in your opinion, with the growth of these technologies, how do you envision the future of the metaverse affecting everyday life? That's a great question. Um, and, you know, I have to, you know, be upfront. Like my, my viewpoint is an, an optimist in this type of technology. I, I believe that um, technology in general can have its impacts on humanity. But I think that the uh, quote unquote metaverse applications, whether they be VR, AR, mixed reality, and, and from my viewpoint, metaverse goes even deeper to like heads up dash displays in cars, anywhere that you're seeing digital content integrating into your physical reality ma matches my definition of the metaverse. And I, I feel like um, those technologies offer accessibility globally around the world at a scale and a potential that we've never seen before. And uh, you have to take the considerations of impact as well, but the opportunity that that presents globally to the world is quite um, significant. You know, going through, uh, you know, the past five years that the world has together, uh, recognizing um, virtual presence and the way that we can still connect around the world uh, virtually or asynchronously is, is, is quite a, a, a statement for the potential for what metaverse applications, VR applications, AR applications can really bring to the world. And I don't mean entertainment and I don't mean games. I mean the way that we interact with the world itself, driving cars, shopping at grocery stores, doing your day-to-day -day life may become easier and not even just the leisure activities or the productivity activities, education itself. You know, one of the first applications uh, for VR that I had a pleasure of working with was with Creative Labs at Google. And we were doing some early experiments with the expeditions programs on teaching kids how fireworks work using VR. And we were able to dive into the physics of it and teach young kids in elementary school what physics and fireworks meant through this ability to dive inside and show a visual example. And that really taps into what I think the potential of these metaverse applications are. It's not so much leisure. It's not so much games or some productivity. It's like the opportunity for growth and expansion of like knowledge and, and the human just uh, potential. Well said. Very well said. Can you, uh, I know, uh, time is of the essence, but can you discuss any upcoming projects or initiatives Remote Control is working on that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, I, I you know, there's, I can't say too much, but I can say that we're deeply invested in AI. Uh, we are excited about those same opportunities that I just discussed about the metaverse and VR AR with AI as well. And it, it doesn't come without the recognition of, of its impacts, but it comes with the recognition of the opportunity. So we believe at RC that um, AI is going to be a major transformation for the world, as most people do. But we see our specific niche as being able to create um, a, a face and a, and a personality for AI that other people don't have the capability to do right now. I think a lot of the AI interactions right now are very text-based, um, or voice based, you talk to it, you type to it. Um, we kind of envision that interaction with AI much more natural. Let's talk people like us face to face with AI and kind of give it a, a fun personality that's enjoyable to communicate with. Right on. Now, Jordan, you founded Remote Control back in 2019, which I'm sure feels like a lifetime ago with all that you and your team have accomplished. But since then, looking ahead, what are your long term goals for Remote Control and how do you plan to achieve them? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Um, AI has really created a, a strong pivot in the technology world. And uh, our initiative, we, I was actually just chatting with my team last week about this, about uh, expanding and strategizing globally. Like, how do we do what we've done for Meta and Peloton across companies globally, especially in this transition from um, what I would call like pre-AI to post-AI and helping them uh, not just cross that transition from a technology perspective, but cross it from a quality perspective. Maintain quality of user experience as you integrate these new technologies and maintaining what, what I call like the sanctity of the human experience, right? We don't want to forget that all of these things are for people. So remote control is really um, focused for probably the foreseeable future on trying to help companies uh, make better products for people. 
Wow. Well, we are officially out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We covered so much and I learned so much from you and your perspective is unique and refreshing. And I love your enthusiasm because we need thought leaders like you in the industry to really continue the trailblazing because it's really truly about just understanding the technology, applying it, proper use cases, and not being afraid of, of change, right? And I think that's what a lot of people are stuck in web one and web two and are afraid to even explore what web three means, but it's going to come a point where they have no choice. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the time to talk about my story and thank you so much for, for hosting. Absolutely. That was Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Smart Pet Talk. And that was the incredible Jordan Harvey, founder of Remote Control Technology. Definitely be sure to check them out and learn more online at rc.tech and capabilities.rc.tech. And of course, check them out on the gram at Jordan underscore James underscore Harvey. And of course, to see more of Dan, head to discoveryourpotentialshow.com. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, 100% pure coconut water. Imagine a drink that's nutrient-rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it will become your new favorite beverage. Enter Once Upon a Coconut, the absolute best-tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com. Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in the Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, today in honor of LGBTQ and Pride Month, we're chatting with director Ryan Sarno and actor-producer Sergio Acevedo, currently starring in the film The Greatest, which is a 1960s LGBTQ feature. Ryan Sarno is a New York-based director and production designer known for Entitled, which is on Amazon Prime, and the film The Greatest that he produced, wrote, directed, and set designed. Sergio is a New York-based actor and model. He has appeared in Saturdays, Blue Bloods, Law & Order, and American Horror Story. He's currently starring in The Greatest. Now, The Greatest is a 1960s LGBTQ drama set in New York, exploring a love triangle between Jay and Beverly McCline and Ricky. Inhibited by his conventional life, Jay is forced to confront his darkest secret when having to choose between a life of normality and authenticity. It's a story that truly challenges societal norms as Jay and Ricky embark on a forbidden romance, risking everything. Today, we're going to dive into their experiences, collaborations, and insights into the film industry in making the greatest. Welcoming now to the show are Ryan and Sergio. Welcome, superstars. Hello, hello, hello. thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us. So, so, so proud of both of you. Congratulations on an incredible film. You guys truly poured your heart and soul into this, and I can't wait to pick your brain to find out how it all came about. Congratulations. Oh, thank thanks you so much. Now, the 1960s were a transformative time in American history, and it was really marked by significant social changes, civil rights movements, and cultural shifts. And according to the National Endowment for the Humanities, films set in historical periods often require extensive research and attention to detail to accurately depict the era. Now, your commitment to authenticity uh, likely resonates with audience and critis critics alike, without a doubt. Ryan, I would love to know the greatest, which which has been making waves in the film festival circuit. Given the historical context and the meticulous effort you put into production design, what inspired you to set your story in this particular era? And what does this film represent for the LGBTQ community? Yeah, so I've always had a love for the 50s and the 60s, and I always had my mindset on shooting something in that time period. Um, but I'd say my inspiration for this came from a lot of real life experiences. Um, I relate very closely to the main character, Jay, and I kind of took all the emotions that I was feeling during this time and created this fictional story that's also very real for so many people during that time period in so many different ways. Um, but I think it aligned perfectly because this time period was the height of injustice, as you were saying, for the gay community. 
uh, right before the riots and um, all the equality started in the um, uh, late 60s. And and it's interesting because balancing multiple, you're a director, you're a storyteller, uh, you're a production designer. So balancing multiple silos in the, in the entertainment industry is no easy feat. According to the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, actors and producers often face fluctuating schedules and even job uncertainty. So your ability to navigate these challenges and really succeed in diverse roles and making diverse content is truly impressive and that really offers valuable insight for aspiring actors and producers and multi-talented artists like yourself so congratulations to you now i have a question for you sergio my dear you've had quite a dynamic career from landing your first commercial at age 10 to starring in major tv shows and now playing a lead in the greatest how do you balance the various facets of your career like acting and modeling and producing but still staying true to your artistic vision and really your authentic self? I think it's all a matter of balance and, you know, being very organized in everything that you do. I enjoy all of it. So all of it is a passion of mine. I enjoy everything that I do, whether it's, it's the acting, the modeling, producing, helping Ryan with the, you know, helping Ryan the past three years with this film, which is how long it took to shoot this independent film. We would shoot on the weekends and uh, it's just a matter of, matter of balance and just keeping your eye on the prize and being your authentic self in every kind of way. And collaboration is key in filmmaking, right? Collaboration in a film can make or break a project. Successful films, you know this better than anyone, often result from strong partnerships between directors and actors. And truly, your combined effort likely brought unique perspectives and strengths to the greatest, which enriched the storytelling and the production quality. Now, this question is for both of you, but uh, Ryan, you can go first. Um, as, a, as a director of the greatest, how did your collaborative process influence the final product? And were there any memorable moments or significant challenges that really shaped the film over the last three years? Yeah, I think when we had our table reads together and did our rehearsals, I think one of our main goals was to make sure that you felt the struggle of each one of the characters and exactly what they were going through. We really wanted to make sure that came across on screen. Um, but I think one of our biggest challenges um, that we worked very closely together on, Sergio and I especially, was casting the older versions of our younger characters. So casting the older version of Sergio, the older version of Isaac. It was very, um, it was a very interesting process because we realized that people in the age bracket, like actors, men, actors in the age bracket of 60s, 70s, and 80s were a little reluctant to play a gay role and portray themselves as, you know, a, a gay a male on screen. So after a few denials of for the role after auditions, we were like, wow, this is this is really tough. And like this it, it just shed light on that whole that whole like wow, this is this is still like a problem and we still kind of have a long way to go. And this is amazing that we're telling this story for this exact reason. But I think that was one of the biggest challenges that we had to face during this. We eventually found our older actors, Jeff and uh, David, and they were amazing. And it was perfect at the end of the day, but that was definitely an eye-opening challenge that we uh, went through when uh, casting. It's all about timing. Yep. Now, Sergio, as, as an actor and producer of The Greatest, how did your creative collaboration process influence the final product of the film? And what were some of more of your memorable moments or challenges that helped you help shape the film? So I met Ryan in 2018. I actually auditioned for him for his TV show pilot entitled, which is now on Amazon Prime. And from being on set in 2018, shooting that, building a friendship and everyone on set just became a family. And from that, he presented me this script. I read the script. I was like in tears by the end. I was like, this is incredible. I'm totally down to be part of this. And because of that friendship and that relationship we built, over the years, it was very easy to collaborate and go back and forth with ideas. And Ryan, as a director, was very open to uh, letting me be an actor and, and just, you know, he was like, try this and, you know, be free to try that. And I was just open to, you know, doing me, but also having his direction in it. So I thought that was a, a beautiful thing. And I think the only challenging thing was maybe continuity, having the same hairstyle for the past three years, you know, we would shoot on the weekend. So 
we would do a scene in, one weekend and then go back to it the next weekend and have to remember what what was what what did we wear where was this at in the scene and I think that was the most challenging thing for me was the continuity the continuity of it all well yeah that that could definitely uh, be a, a huge damper in production if you miss one beat there i know even for myself i have to stay continuous with the outfits based on these episodes now it's true now new york city has long been a cornerstone of the film and entertainment industry according to nyc's mayor's office of media and entertainment the film and tv sector contributes billions to the local economy and supports tens of thousands of jobs now as a director and storyteller Ryan, how do you see inclusivity evolving in the industry in the context of filmmaking and content creation, especially in a bustling creative hub like New York City? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been seeing a lot more stories that are being told like The Greatest. I mean, three of my favorites that inspired um, The Greatest are The Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Moonlight, Call Me By Your Name. Those were huge inspirations for me. Um, I think it's really important to tell stories like this so we understand where we came from so we could learn and grow. Um, but I think we're also starting to see a lot of content that's being made where being gay isn't the focal point of the story or the main conflict of the story, which is amazing. And I love that. It's, it's very progressive and moving us away from stereotypes and just making a gay character just a regular human instead of instead of making it the aid of the conflict to the story, which is very, which was a very common thing to do in uh, TV and television in the past. But um, like I said before, I think it's very important to understand our past to, to understand our present. And that's why I think stories like The Greatest are very important to tell. It's so important to demystify the stigmas surrounding uh, gay and, and LGBTQ community and the history of it all and the psychology of it all. It's like you said, it, it, normalizing it begins with normalizing it, right? Now, representation in media is more crucial than ever. I was reading a report by the UCLA a Hollywood Diversity Report, and it emphasized the growing demand for diverse voices and stories in the entertainment industry. So your background and experiences un undoubted, undoubtedly bring a unique and authentic perspective to, um, to these roles and to these stories that you're telling, enriching really the narratives and connecting with a broader audience. So what you're doing is no easy feat, but you've done a great job. Now, um, Sergio, your diverse heritage from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, combined with your upbringing in Pennsylvania and Florida, must have actually really provided you with a cultural perspective, a rich cultural perspective. How has this influenced your approach to acting and storytelling, particularly in the project The Greatest? Yeah, so my stepdad was in the Army, so we grew up moving around a lot all along the East Coast. I've been living I've lived in seven different states I moved every year until I was in 10th grade so I think with all that experience I was able to meet so many different types of people so many di types of uh, different cultures and I like to observe people so I you know I, I I I've you know had experience in observing a lot of people and how this person does that how does that person you know do the mannerisms or how they talk and everything like that and I think that's really helped me with acting and when it came to the greatest, I actually reached out to my grandfather, who in in the in the greatest I play Ricky is a poor Latino Puerto Rican in Spanish Harlem. And my grandfather was actually that in in the 60s. He was in his early 20s, just like my character Ricky. And I I called him up one day just to do more research on the film. And you know, my grandfather's like 86 now. And I was like, Hey, Papa is what I call him. I, I'm doing some research on a character, on a film that I'm doing in the 60s. I want to know everything. Like, how do you style your hair? What kind of clothes did you wear? Did you say certain things like slang back in the day? And he goes, well, Sergio, you know, I, I really don't remember. That was such a long time ago, but you can Google that, you know? <laughs> so I ended up Googling it. And uh, I, I ended up watching a lot of videos, uh, you know, in the 60s, like how people dance and, I saw West Side Story a lot of times. So I did a lot of research with that. And I also reached out to Ryan's partner, Jose, DJ Hovis. <laughs> He's a DJ. We call him <laughs> Hovi. Um, and, you know, I, I sat down with him and because um, I play him in the film, essentially. 
And I sat down with him. We had a heart to heart. And, you know, I really wanted to know what he went through in his experience, which really helped me. All these, you know, aspects and, and things helped me with my character, basically. Wow. Well, you've come full circle, my dear. We are at the end of our time. This interview has been quite, quite amazing. I got to get such nice and deep and authentic insight into your process, into who you both are, and got to know you a little bit more. And now I'm even more excited to watch the entire film. Uh, definitely, definitely have you come back on in a couple of months to re-promote this. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Yes, Absolutely. thank you so much for having us. Nice meeting you. That was Ryan and Sergio. Thank you for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. Really, your, their dedication truly to their craft and their collaborative spirit behind the greatest serves as an inspiration, at least to me, when I see this trailer and to many in the industry. We truly look forward to seeing more of their work and the impact it will undoubtedly have on audiences and in the filmmaking community. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. You could check them out on the gram at Ryan Sarno and at flow gio and at the greatest underscore movie you're listening to a moment of zen right here on 710 wor the voice of new york iheart radio we'll be right back after this a moment of zen is brought to you by once upon a coconut 100 pure coconut water imagine a drink that's nutrient rich powerfully refreshing naturally sweet with no added sugars not from concentrate zero additives low in calories absolutely no artificial flavors and it's so tasty that it'll become your new favorite beverage enter once upon a coconut the absolute best best tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Your Home TV. Hi, this is Kathy Ireland here on A Moment of Zen brought to you by Your Home TV. We've developed an all-inclusive subscription-free network that you're going to love, whether it's financial freedom, fashion, beauty, health and wellness, wonderful weddings, travel and culture, cooking, entertainment, and short-form documentaries, programming for everyone. Classic films and new shows, including Kathy Ireland Presents American Dreams. We've developed this network just for you. Please Please check out yourhometv.com. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. Here we are in Lower Manhattan. I'm Imran Ansari, and I'm giving you the Trump trial update. Of course, Donald Trump found guilty on 34 counts in the indictment in a courthouse just right you know, down the street from here. I'm in front of the civil courthouse here. Uh, 34 count indictment. He was found guilty. What is next for Donald Trump? Well, appeal, appeal, appeal. He's likely going to be filing an appeal of that indictment. And I got to tell you, there's definitely some grounds for that appeal to have merit. Some decisions from the judge as to what evidence could come in, uh, what he was apprised of, of the charges, whether that was a due process violation, was his constitutional rights violated. There's a lot of issues that may come to the forefront in an appeal of that conviction. And we expect that appeal to be filed by his attorneys, maybe in a couple months. Um, but what about the election? The election will be here before you know it. Can he still run for president? Yes. Can he still be president? Yes. And then I expect that Donald Trump is going to be using this conviction as a rallying cry for his base to drum up more support to say this was a political prosecution not grounded in law and that those charges were basically made up in many ways in order to take him into court uh, and hinder his electability. But we know he can serve as president despite the conviction. He can run for president. These are uh, things that are not affected by that conviction. And of course, he has more pending criminal cases uh, in various ju jurisdictions, state and federal, down in Georgia, that he's going to have to deal with, of course. But um, in terms of what's next, after this 34 uh, uh, count conviction, I expect an appeal and I expect him to fight that conviction really vehemently and strongly uh, in the appellate courts. That's it for me. I'm Imran Ansari. You're listening to A Moment of Zen. 
A Moment of Zen is sponsored by Fintech TV. Fintech TV, the newest streaming channel focused exclusively on the business of blockchain, digital assets, and sustainability. Broadcasting from our studio on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with daily reports from NASDAQ, global expansion, and 24-7 coverage. Become part of the launch. Head to fintech.tv slash invest. Fintech.tv slash invest. Tune in to A Moment of Zen, Saturday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Well, that's a wrap, my dear friends. Remember to join me right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Or you could head to 710wor.iheart.com forward slash a moment of zen. Also remember that we're live on Traverse TV Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And of course, all episodes of a moment of zen stream 24 7 on your home tv and kathy ireland worldwide you could head directly to our channel at mox.yourhometv.com thank you for listening to us it's been an absolute pleasure being your host thanks again to all of our sponsors that continue to make this show possible and remember that happiness is the only thing that multiplies when you share it we'll be back next week